Hello. Today I'm here to talk about a film that is 30 years old. And uh, I consider it a horror movie, and there are many others who do too. Um, but some would also describe this as a thriller. Uh, but I think uh, psychological horror uh, works with this film. And that film is The Silence of the Lambs. This is the Criterion uh, Blu-ray. And, uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, my tenth favorite film of all time, actually. Um, it's my top ten. I've uh, mentioned that before. Uh, did a top twenty uh, list this year, and this remained in top ten at number ten, so uh, <clears throat> didn't move up, but it didn't move down either. Uh, I just love this film so much, um, and because of that, it's one of those where it's like you know, what can you really say that hasn't ever been said about this film? And I don't know what I can even begin to say, uh, so. What I'll do is uh, just, I guess, talk about certain things, like, uh, I guess, particularly performances. Um, Anthony Hopkins, uh, in my opinion, and, as, and I think many others, uh, he truly shines in this film. He, every time he is on screen, he uh, you can't take your eyes off him. Also, that's not also like a joke in that, you know, he just stares constantly every time he talks and every time he is talking, he never blinks, which is something he uh, uh, got from watching uh, Charles Manson. Anytime Charles Manson would talk, he never blinked at all. It was only once he stopped talking, he would then blink. So that's what Anthony Hopkins did as Hannibal Lecter. Um, Jodie Foster plays Corey Starling, of course, as the uh, FBI agent. Uh, trainees, I guess specifically, uh, no spoiler, at the end of the film she does become a fully-fledged uh, FBI agent. Uh, but prior, you know, she's a trainee and she's uh, tracking down uh, Buffalo Bill, played by Ted Levine. The, uh, Buffalo Bill and Hannibal Lecter, I would say, is where the psychological horror part uh, comes in because uh, Buffalo Bill is a killer of women. He kills them and skins them for a woman's suit that he's making for himself. He, uh, as Hannibal Lecter says, he believes he's a transsexual, but he really isn't. You know, and to see if you are one or what have you, you know, essentially, you gotta doctors and be evaluated and see if you truly are and like neurologically you believe this to be an absolute fact and if so then you can go and get surgery well Buffalo Bill Jane Gum uh, as we find out his name he is not uh, at all he has, he's basically in his mind he is fine he is not at all transsexual as he thinks and so as a result uh, he believes he is so he's gonna be a woman any way he can and that uh, it goes into the form of uh, killing and skinning women uh, puts them down in his basement there's like a little like, hole and they starve he starves them and he has women of a specific size and then he uh, after a certain period of time he then uh, kills them and then skins a, a portion of their skin to then take and later uh, sew together and uh, throughout the movie you actually see part of this uh, suit he is wearing it's very creepy, and uh, he also has a dog, uh, Precious. Um, so that's one part of the horror of this film. And, of course, the other is Hannibal Lecter, who 
plays mind games with Corey's Starling and way he like stares at her is like staring into her soul and he has a very calm demeanor throughout the film uh, and also he's a cannibal you know he, they have a cannibal doctor helping them find uh, this serial killer of women helping them and giving certain clues and yet is also quite vague because yeah, you know he has to have his own fun he can't just uh, play ball uh, you know and he is told that at one point he will get to uh, have uh, get to leave uh, prison and uh, go somewhere else be transferred and uh, to a place that will be, you know, great and, uh, you know, for his cooperation, um, which, uh, you know, turns out not to actually going to happen, um, but for a period he does believe that, that, so, in the realm of possibility if he plays ball, but then it's, uh, told to him that's not going to happen and he's not very uh, not obviously not too happy uh, with that and uh, and the title of the film comes in um, when it comes to um, uh, Clarice and him talking and how after her father who was a police officer was killed she like went to farm and you know one day uh, you know she heard this terrible noise of lambs being slaughtered and she tried to take one and run and with it but you know she was very young and the lamb was heavy so she didn't get very far uh, and so of course that's where the, you know, the title uh, comes from um, of course this is based off of a book by uh, um, Thomas Harris yes I thought I, I, I thought that was the name of the author Thomas uh, Harris but I, I, I wanted to make sure um, the film is uh, made by Jonathan Demme uh, um, and this film got, uh, received backlash uh, saying it was homophobic due to the, uh, you know, uh, Buffalo Bill, like he's gay, but the character is not gay, um, and in fact people are like, you know, if, if he was gay, he would actually be killing men instead of women. Um, so there's a whole discussion with, I guess, how that could work if it was like he's like attracted to women and he also like uh, wants to be a woman and everything so I guess in a way he wants to be like possibly uh, be like a lesbian yet it's, it's that, that kind of conversation is something that's like you know uh, that others have uh, I guess had and that's what discussions happened before but basically he's not gay if he was gay he'd be doing this to men but he's doing it to women of course, that doesn't mean it's any better, but, you know, that's the, uh, that is the, uh, logic of sorts. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, uh, uh, Buffalo Bill has been doing that for uh, killing women and getting their various parts of their skin skins from the bodies and uh, that he wants or in his mind needs for a suit um, and of course the that character is based in part off of Ed Gein who also inspired uh, Anthony Perkins in Psycho or uh, 
Norman Bates in Psycho. Uh, Anthony Perkins just played Norman Bates in that film. Um, as well as uh, Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So uh, Ed Gein, he, uh, you know, he uh, uh, inspired uh, various. Uh, oh, uh, excuse me. He inspired various uh, horror characters uh, in some part. He grave robbed and took people's dead bodies and skinned them, made a suit of that, uh, uh, as his own. Um, but yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, this film, of course, also won five Academy Awards, the top five best picture, best director. Best adapted screenplay. Uh, Ted Talley wrote the script. Uh, best actor and best actress. Uh, it's the third film to ever win all those categories. One for the Cuckoo's Nest was the last film before Sounds of the Lambs to ever win those five categories. And before that, it, the first film was uh, It Happened One Night. Um, and uh, and I have well, I actually own these other two films. Um, of course, I talked about one for the Cuckoo's Nest, um, but I have never have not talked about uh, it happened one night. I might have to do that sometime in the future. Uh, but yeah, one only only uh, those five Oscars was nominated for four others. Um, but. Uh, film is an, uh, incredible, it's a classic. Um, I have seen it on the big screen before, and hopefully, you know, by the time this uh, video is up, I will have seen it again for its 30th anniversary um, on the big screen. Um, I'm planning on it, as well as another film that I won't talk about uh, this month, because I'm kind of waiting that anniversary uh, uh, it's something I've cut I have talked about at one point uh, like of a group of films together but uh, hopefully I, I will make sure to do that video by the end of the year and uh, talk about the film that film but um, yeah, this film is excellent. Um, love this movie. Again, one of my favorites of all time. Uh, definitely a classic. Um, I remember seeing um, part of this film. Um, spoilers, uh, but it's the part where uh, Hannibal, after he uh, attacked the uh, guards at the prison, or the facility building he's being held uh, prisoner in um, and he uh, kills like a guard after he uh, handcuffed him because he picked his lock and then he also beat and pepper sprayed the other guy the other guard and then uh, beat the guard he uh, uh handcuffed to the cell uh, bars with a, and you know beat him to death uh, and then he uh, went and uh, you know took the other guy's uh, uniform and then after that he cut off his face and put it on his um, now all that stuff I didn't see but uh, it was just uh, when he was in the host in the ambulance they're going to take him to the hospital because they think it's the other guy when later they find out nope that, that is not uh... oh excuse me yeah, that, uh, that is not actually Hannibal it is uh, the, uh, the, the the officer I should say officer is more like it 
not guard, but though they were standing guard or guarding Hannibal. Um, but the officer, uh, who they thought was injured and was going to be taken to the hospital, because he also got bit in the face because he's a cannibal. Um, and one thing about that, I actually uh, was told prior to actually watching the movie, uh, and I was 11 years old when I saw this for the first time, uh, all the way through because before it was just that clip of him being in the ambulance and then as one officer is talking and he gets up and starts to like, take off the thing mask the, wrapping around the face and then he uh, takes off the uh, oxygen mask and then he walks up yeah I'm the officer that takes off the face and just looking at him. And that part actually, uh, interestingly enough, that is my favorite part of the film. Uh, it is not horrific exactly, but it's just a very creepy and interesting and I find it very creative in that. That's like a, that, as a part of uh, Hannibal Lecter's scheme of getting out. That's obviously like a part of it. You know, he kills the uh, officer in there with him, as well as later the you know, ambulance driver. Um, I just found that to be particularly just very creepy, eerie, and yet so well done that it's just my favorite part of the film. Uh, uh, beyond those uh, reasons, I can't explain exactly why. I just really like that part. But regarding with the whole biting thing, um, I was actually told uh, that he, oh he he bites some guy's nose off, and I'm like oh that sounds really good. I don't want to watch that movie. I guess that kind of just shows you. Uh, I guess I was kind of twisted at that age. I wanted to see somebody get their nose bitten off at age eleven. Um, can't exactly recall exactly why but it just seemed like I, I want to watch this movie and I guess that was just the thing that just really made me want to uh, get into it um, so I did I watched it um, with my mom and uh, I really loved it though I remember when that part came where he bites the guy and his nose was still there I was a bit disappointed but you know the, the whole scene itself and whole film uh, up to that point was so good and then the film uh, how it ends is also so good and it's excellent that you know I was able to overlook that fact that somebody didn't get their nose bitten off um, and at this point I don't really care that that didn't happen but it's kind of funny to look back at and uh, uh, when I first saw it and what my uh, initial, you know, one of the big reasons I wanted to watch it was because of that fact that I wanted to see somebody get their nose bitten off and, um, you know, that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, this film is 30 years old. It's a classic. It's incredible. Uh, I love it. Uh, I know I was a bit uh, incoherent at times here and there in terms of like a rambling a little bit here and there, but uh, I really love this movie. It's great. Um, it deserved all the Academy Awards it got. It's the first horror film to win an Academy Award, and I hope from the various things with Hannibal Lecter and, uh, you know, Buffalo Bill with what I've described of their characters, even though people have most likely have already seen this film many times over, uh, but wanted to really focus on those two characters in certain aspects as to what, why they're creepy and that creepiness, um, I think it is very, uh, effective. It's, you know, again, it's a psychological horror film. It's not a horror film in the sense of it's a slasher and people die, is you know, horror isn't always about that, you know. There is suspense in horror films, you know. 
know, there are thrills in horror films. And I can see why this is called a thriller, but I do think it is a horror film. Uh, first and foremost, in the psychological uh, uh, part of that psychological horror. And then thriller can be after that because, you know, it's chasing, it's trying to find somebody who's killing women and the woman who is uh, kidnapped is a senator's daughter and so you know she wants her daughter back they want to get her before uh, she dies um, or is killed and find her body somewhere else um, you know usually like around water like in a river bodies of water uh, so you know uh, a lot of the horrific stuff going on in a lot of ways it's sort of like a sort of almost like a true crime story in the way the characters talk and how their things are being executed and strategies as to try and find and solve who this person is that's kidnapping and killing all these women for like this suit as well as having to have a serial killer help them, which, you know, in a way that's sort of like to what Tim Bundy did. He was sort of help and trying to help the police find out, figure out who, uh, like, the Green River killer was. Um, he uh, also... Um, Ted Bundy and so many others, like uh, John Wayne Gacy, also helped inspire uh, the creation of uh, Buffalo Bill. And there was also somebody who had like a hole like, like in their basement, also to keep their uh, people in before they, you know, killed them. Uh, I forget who that was off the top of my head, um, but you know, there's many killers that influenced. Uh, Buffalo Bill, as well as in you know, certain aspects of uh, Animal Lecter. But, yeah, just, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here who uh, that makes this film excellent. Everybody did their best and gave their all, and it shows throughout the film. Uh, I always enjoy rewatching it um, every so often, and, you know, rewatching it. Uh, prior for this video and then when I'm gonna go and watch it in the theater I most definitely will uh, enjoy and love every uh, moment of uh, of it uh, yeah so that, those are my overall thoughts on um, uh, the sounds of the lambs um, in the comments you can uh, write what you think uh, do you enjoy this film do you not like this film uh, do you have any parts that are, that are your favorite um, yeah uh, what, what what do you enjoy about this film or what do you dislike uh, do you believe the awards it got were well deserved or no um, I know people say, you know, oh, Anthony Hopkins wasn't in that film very long. Like, you know, screen time-wise, he was in it for 16 minutes. Though if you count the total of all the scenes he was in, it's like 20, but you have to also count the, how much screen time Jodie Foster has or somebody else has when you're not looking at Anthony Hopkins. But you're just focusing on only Anthony Hopkins when he's just on screen and not talking when the camera is looking at somebody else. You know, you gotta count with that. And he's in the he is in the film for 16 minutes, you know, screen time wise. That's how uh, long you see in this film is just one minute away uh, from being two hours long. So, in an almost two hour of film, he's in this for you see him for 16 minutes. And uh, the way they talk about Hannibal Lecter before you see him. And how his presence has always basically felt after he's introduced. It seems like he is in the movie way longer 
then the 20 some minutes of scenes total of the scenes he's in as well as the 16 minutes of screen time Anthony Hopkins has it seems like he's in it longer and so from that I can completely understand why he was up for the lead actor category um, though I do think uh, Ty Levine should have been up for an Academy Award uh, I guess for supporting though that'd be interesting you know he has more screen time than Hopkins but Hopkins is up for best actor and wins um, and I think that's a uh, like the performances of Jodie Foster and uh, uh, Anthony Hop Hopkins are truly incredible um, they both deserve the, their Oscars I know I didn't talk about Jodie Foster too much here um, but she's excellent too I think it's that Hannibal Lecter is so uh, much talked about and for good reason you know Anthony Hopkins knocked it out of the park but so did Jodie Foster she's great she was incredible um, though Jonathan Demme did want uh, Michelle Pfeiffer for the part of Clarice Darling because um, they worked together on Married to the Mob but she thought the script was too violent and didn't want any part of it but uh, that might have been a mistake on her part in that, you know, we uh, see how great of a job uh, Jodie Foster did. Um, you know, I can't really see uh, anybody else in this role here. Um, but I guess I could kind of see perhaps uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, I am happy that Jodie Foster is in this film, though. But Jodie Foster, because uh, yeah, Jodie Foster did a great job uh, but, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer would have done a very good job, uh, job to show women in the FBI and training and how, you know, it is a big deal that, you know, there's female agents um, at a time where that was a very common and, you know, they have to, you know, uh, compete against the guys and, you know, show that they are definitely... Uh, you know, worth, you know, just as good uh, at the job as the guys are, you know, without also trying to prove they are just as good or even better, you know, just have to do good work and then let that speak for, uh, for them, you know, um, so, and that way, you know, it's just great, the script and direction and the performance is excellent uh so yeah those are all my flaws really for now um yeah tell me what you think about the film again in the comments and um yeah hope you all have a great week have a great weekend and a great day i'll see you all next time